Sierra Leone's foreign minister says it's important for regional bloc ECOWAS to re-engage with the three countries that announced their immediate withdrawal from the group. Timothy Musakaba has been leading ECOWAS foreign minister's negotiation efforts with Niger. He also says it is important to find solutions to return the countries to constitutional rule. His remarks come after Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso jointly announced their withdrawal without delay from ECOWAS saying the bloc has become a threat to member states. For more reaction and the latest update, I reach Kaba by phone. Frustrating, disappointing and utter dismay. Nonetheless, hope is not lost. Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali are very important components of the West African bloc. ECOWAS, over the period, has been mediating with these countries to bring these countries back to constitutional rule. Unfortunately, um, on Sunday, three countries came together and made a pronouncement that they ceased existing as members of the ECOWAS community. Um, this is not good news. Uh, these three countries have a common characteristics. These countries are threatened by terrorist activities and, uh, and, um, and internal politics. And so it is very important that um, ECOWAS, um, you know, re-engages these countries and uh, have them to come to the table and for us to discuss as a community to advance our common aspiration as people of the West African bloc. Niger, particularly, I understand, was unhappy after a scheduled meeting for it to present its side of the argument to find a solution to their concerns, and that ECOWAS uh, basically refused to attend the meeting, for which reason they decided, okay, enough of this, we are getting out. Uh, how do you respond to it, especially since you have been leading the negotiation efforts with Niger? It's unfortunate, Peter, because um, I, I, I was myself in Abuja with my colleague foreign ministers that are part of the mediating um, the, the mediating team. Uh, we were all bound uh, to travel to Niger on that very fateful day. And unfortunately, uh, in the morning hours, we couldn't um, get the landing permit from the Nigerian authorities. And many calls were made. And, and then uh, around midday, the landing permit was issued to the flight that was hired by ECOWAS. And, and when we were just about to board the flight to meet with our brothers in the Republic of Niger to start the negotiation, unfortunately, we learned that the aircraft that was hired by the ECOWAS Commission, um, you know, had technical difficulties. And so we, we could not fly that evening. And then ECOWAS immediately had a press release uh, in which it expressed its utter uh, disappointment, uh, its utter regret in not having that mission um, you know, uh, held on that very day. And it apologized to the authorities of uh, of Niger and, and requested that another day be scheduled for the, the, the mediation. Importance of this negotiation, the greater importance of bringing back these countries to constitutional order is for the collective prosperity, collective stability, peace and security of the West African bloc. I, I was going to ask you whether ECOWAS will still engage with uh, these countries, including Niger, to try to resolve this political impasse and the decision to move away from the regional bloc. But then some also are expressing concern that ECOWAS is unduly being influenced by powers that be outside Africa, for which reason they are uncomfortable to be members. Peter, these claims are not uncommon. And um, in uh, doing you know, uh, during uh, perilous times like these, people will be suspicious of each other. But I will tell you, um, the, um, in the 64th summit of the heads of state and government of the ECOWAS community, um, a, a public vote was, uh, was conducted where members, um, you know, selected Sierra Leone and Togo as the key mediators, um, you know, uh, between ECOWAS and the authorities of Niger to be backstopped by Nigeria and Benin. But um, largely, I will tell you, this is an ECOWAS endeavor, and it's an endeavor that is not adulterated by any external interest whatsoever. It is purely an ECOWAS aspiration for peace and security to be attained in these Sahelian countries and for West Africa in general to be peaceful and conducive for investment and for the development of the people of the West African community. Where do you think ECOWAS should go from here following this announcement of these countries 
uh, deciding to pull out immediately. The rules of the game is if a member state wants to withdraw from the community, an application will be made, which will be considered in a year. And, and, and I think uh, we have an opportunity now. Um, no formal letter or, uh, or, or such application of withdrawal has been so far uh, sent to the ECOWAS Commission. So we have an opportunity now uh, to engage with these member countries and to find a way out of this uh, deadlock. And I believe um, there could be legitimate reasons, uh, you know, but then at the end of the day, uh, the people of Niger, the people of uh, Burkina Faso and Mali constitute about 15% of the general population of West Africa and half the geographical size of the sub-region. And so therefore it is very important that these countries I remain to be part of ECOWAS. Game says auction house in New York has halted the sale of approximately 70 personal items belonging to South Africa's anti apartheid hero Nelson Mandela. The auction, titled Mandela the Auction Suspended, was abruptly stopped without an explanation. The decision comes in response to public outcry in South Africa. Makaziwe Mandela, the eldest daughter of Nelson Mandela, had planned to auction items such as his hearing aids, walking sticks, and reading glasses on February 22nd. She aimed to use the proceeds to fund a memorial garden near his burial site. The South Africa Heritage Resources Agency contested her decision in court but lost the case. Sahla intends to appeal the ruling. South Africa's Arts and Culture Minister Zizi Kodra said that blocking the sale was necessary as Mr. Mandela is integral to South Africa's heritage. It is thus important that we perceive the legacy of former President Mandela and ensure that his life's work experiences remain in the country for generations to come, he said. Mr. Mandela's grandson in Daba was quoted by local media as saying he too was opposed to the auction. Mr. Mandela died in 2013 at the age of 95. He was imprisoned for nearly 30 years for fighting white minority rule and become South Africa's first black president in 1994. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.